What are you doing, Joey? What are you doing? This is where the lawnmower usually is. Why would I put this in here? Hmm. Where's my Jeep? Okay, with the brake assembly removed, caliper, rotor, <coughs> there's the new, there's the new uh, front bearing. It was expensive because it's got the ABS in it. Um, it was like $220 that they list for over three. So I gotta take that back off. Brake assembly. 12 millimeter, 21 millimeter wrench, and the hub assembly comes out with a reverse Torx number 14, I think it says. Um, the old one, I just put a little heat on these corners because if you break the heads off of these bolts from the back, um, probably going to replace the knuckle. <laughs> First step is that nut right there. 35 millimeter socket on an impact that off and you're going to want to give it a little tap to break it free because the spline there um, before needed a couple of good wax to get that thing broke free and then go after these okay hubs off I'm going to attempt to pull this shaft out now and then I'm going to see what's going on in there. Maybe I can replace the bearing right there. I doubt it though. I don't even know if there's a bearing right there. Maybe the shaft goes all the way in. In that case, maybe I got to pull all this off. I don't know. Okay, steer and knuckle out. A little more access. Still can't get the shaft out though. Gonna have to drop the uh, lower control arm or take out the uh, strut. Oh. And that ain't going back in if I wanted it to. Oh, there it went. Huh. I could put it back together right now, but nope. We still got a problem in there. Yeah. And I got the shaft out. And that's the problem. It's not even a bearing. That's where it rests, rides on the end of the differential housing. But it's right in there. So that's what needs to be replaced. Because in there seems to be fine. It wasn't even leaking. But yeah, what you gotta go through to get to that? Whoa. Okay, so here's a remanufactured uh, axle. Came with the CV joints. Um, luckily, uh, Brian, the alignment guy, knows a guy a few towns away that rebuilds these. Um, it's a $250 axle uh, from Chrysler. This would have been o uh, over $600, he was telling me. So I guess this is good. Um, also, when I took this out, that was seized right in there, as loose as it was, and um, that's that's there's a spline set up that goes in there and interlocks. I'm gonna grease that up really good, but I'm gonna put that first part in first, 
Um, I guess in a way I was lucky that it only came out together even though it required me to really rip everything apart to, for access. Um, I guess sometimes when you pull these out that doesn't come out and it's really hard to get out of there because there's no way to grab it. I guess guys even weld a tab on the end to pull them out is what they were telling me. So I guess in a way I was lucky that was all seized and fused together. So I'm going to throw that shaft in and then I'm going to drain the, the diff. There's a drain plug at the bottom. It takes, let's see, it takes 80, 90. Mainly I, I just want to check it for metal filings, but problem, no problem seemed to be from in there. But just for peace of mind, I'm going to do that. So here goes. There's the plug that comes out of the bottom of the differential. Comes out pretty easy with a, a number eight Allen wrench. And I just take that off with the end of a ratchet to fill it back up. And it should be just, just below the level of that when I fill it back up. And luckily there doesn't seem to be any signs of metal fragments in there. So as I suspected, that's okay in there. The problem was right there. And that shaft went back in, the snap rings worked the way they're supposed to, went in pretty nice. I'm going to grease that up really good before I slide it into that. Don't even know if I'll get to that tonight because I, I struggle with the extension on that strut. Brings that down and makes it really hard to get that back together. So I figure I'll be struggling with that for a while. But tonight it's going to be about getting this. Just wanted to make sure this was going to be okay. It's pretty good that I didn't have to pull that out, send it out, have it rebuilt. Okay, this is what was really loose last time and that moved up and down that's how I could tell when I thought it was a bearing in there but it turned out there's a spline connection in there and that's what was gone just worn out there's the new CV boots new hub bearing and I'm glad I replaced it anyways the other one was probably on its way out eventually Got all these, got the knuckle back on. Ugh. A little bit of struggling with the, uh, actually had to use the uh, spring compressors, take a little tension off of that to get um, the fork back onto the strut where it connects to the lower control arm. Um, there it is. That was a little bit of a challenge. After that, everything is kind of slapping back together pretty nice now. Okay, phase three of uh, bad front end noise in the Jeep. Um, after everything I went through and all those obvious parts that needed to be replaced, the noise is still there. I'm a little baffled right now. Um, I was just underneath and checking for looseness in the uh, drive shafts and U-joints. Um, that shaft there was new when I bought this. It had been replaced. Um, that doesn't have any weird play in it. Uh, with the left side jacked up, my suspicions are the uh, this bearing, wheel bearing here. But with the wheel on, there was no back and forth play. It's a little side to side, but that's just the, uh, the rack and pinion. Um, seems normal. Ball joints seem okay. But the noise starts about 30 miles per hour and it gets pretty loud at that point. And it's definitely from somewhere in the front here. I'm really hoping it's nothing to do with the differential because uh, it seems it seems fine. 
Um, drain, draining the fluid. I didn't see any metal filings or anything. But uh, what I might end up doing is taking the old hub bearing from the right side and just putting it on this side. It'll be a pain, but that'll save me a $220 bearing to find out that that's not the problem on this side. Uh, the only problem is the ABS, I think, it's uh, the sensor is directional, so I won't be able to plug it in on this side, which will set a dash light on. Hopefully that'll reset itself when I put the other one back in, if that's not the problem. And if that's not the problem, I'm going to be completely baffled. But uh, brakes are a little tight, so I'm going to take the brakes off and then move this around to see if there's any kind of anything noticeable. But bearings can be tricky. They uh, There's a number of different things they can do, and sounds can transfer through front ends. Um, I've, had, uh, I've had alignment guys and everybody else tell me that these, these problems can be tricky. There's a tool where they put a sound sensor throughout the front end and they run it and that helps pinpoint the problem. Well, I'll pull those off, the uh, brakes caliper off and uh, see if I feel any kind of grittiness in that bearing. Okay, with the caliper out of the way and the uh, bracket off the knuckle, brake shoes out of the way, there's a lot moving here, so it's hard to turn, but um, I'm not feeling any kind of graininess in this bearing here. Um, when, I, when I go like this, if I'm hearing any noise at all, it's coming from that. And uh, that could be a number of things. I don't even know if it's worth putting the old bearing here. These aren't that fun to get off. But I'm not feeling anything from that. What will I do? Hmm. Yeah, so when taking these out, you don't want to strip that head or break that off. So, uh, a little bit of heat right on those corners is your friend. Do more of that than over talking because you snap one of them and then you're pretty much done. You might as well take the whole knuckle off. Which I may still have to do but we'll see. Yeah those little Torx heads that type of bit. It's like a reverse Torx. And that one finally cracked. I got the other two out. And then you still got to tap around this to get that free because it's corroded in. Oh, one more thing for anybody trying to replace a uh, hub bearing. Um, before I loosened these, um, I took that nut out with a, uh, oh, what was it? I showed this earlier, 35 millimeter socket. Pretty much takes an impact wrench to get that thing off while it's jacked up. And then uh, I gave it a few good whacks right there. Um, I put the nut on just enough to protect the threads so I don't wipe them out. And uh, used the complete wrong tool for the job, but it worked. I just took the back of one of these and I just very carefully hit it there a couple of times. It's, those splines set in pretty tight and I got those loose. It only goes out a little bit before you, then you got to take this off to get it the rest of the way. Okay, I got this free. I haven't uh, rooted the ABS line that goes up into the engine compartment. I haven't taken that out yet, but uh, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and say this is the problem. Should it sound like that? And I'll grab the old one, which is right over here. This is the one I replaced on the other side. Doesn't have that 
It's getting there though. I have a feeling this would have gone soon. Compared to this one. Yeah, that's done. That has to be the problem. I've said that a couple of times already, but... <laughs> Let's see. Now I need to find a ride to the parts store if they have it. So I'd rather not put that in for now and go through all this again. I might as well just put a new one in. I, that's definitely gone. You know, it's funny. A wheel bearing, they can get loose. And when you jack your car up in the wheel, the tire moves top to bottom a little bit. Um, that's, that's how they can wear. Or there's just a, you can just feel a real, a real roughness while it turns. But uh, bearings are funny. They can, uh, they can transfer a noise from one side of the car to the other. It's very hard to tell. Um, I went through this with my Saturn when I first got it. One of the original bearings failed but it was intermittent. You could hear a crunching noise every now and then. And I had taken it back to Saturn and uh, back when they still existed. And uh, they replaced control arms. They replaced, they replaced the uh, gearbox at one point. And I knew it was none of that stuff, but it ended up being bearing on the other side from where you could hear the sound is what it ended up being. So yeah, they can be tricky. Um, and that didn't make any noise at all until about 30 miles an hour and it started humming. It, it, for, it initially started, it sounded like a tire out of alignment sound, but um, it just had a real high pitch to it that was, wasn't quite tires. And the tires, I rotated them thinking that was the problem at first and uh, that wasn't the problem. They, uh, and they weren't wearing funny. And of course I found all the stuff on the other side that was about to give me problems. So. You know, I'm going to keep this for a while, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, it's good to have know that's all new. Just got to keep an eye on the ball joints now, because those don't look fun to replace. Um, I'm going to keep them, keep them wet with WD-40, for sure. Um, I've already, I don't I forget if I replaced the calipers. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it, these uh, CV joints, there's two on each side. If it was those, they'd be making a clicking noise, especially when you turn. Um, and like I said, the differential, I drained the fluid, and there was no medical, medical, yeah, there was no metal, metal particles. Um, there was a little bit of debris in the bottom, but nothing metal, because that was uh, over 100,000 miles on that fluid. So that's changed, and uh, that looked okay. So hopefully this is it. I tell you, if I get this back together and I still hear that noise. <laughs> I know one thing, the whole front end will be coming out, but let's hope not. Better, th I get better things to be doing. And that, I believe, is a two and a half inch spacer at the low side. And I don't know if this lift kit came with new springs or what, but that's why it was so hard to get the, uh, the strut forks off on the other side. But I do like the lift on this, it gives it good clearance. Even though we just take it out to the beach, we don't go. That's about the extent of the off road in this gets. Okay. All right, so once again, here's the one I just pulled out. The local place in town had a new one in stock. Here's a new one. And this is what it's supposed to sound like. So, I'll be amazed if this wasn't the problem. <laughs> Here's the new hub bearing installed. Brakes back on. I think the biggest nuisance putting it back together was getting this wire up and around and pulled through there and reconnected, but that's done. And time to put the wheel on and man that sound better be gone. <laughs> well guys, I'm happy to say success. I just took the Jeep for a test drive and she's quieter than she's been in a long time. So that was it. It was a pretty expensive front end ordeal, but I actually everything I replaced needed to be replaced, so 
That's a uh, little security for the front of that Jeep. There's a lot of stuff moving around in there. All right, guys. I uh, hope this helps somebody out someday because uh, <laughs> there wasn't much about this um, on YouTube that I was looking for. All right. Until next time, guys.